Good morning. How are you? Good. I thought I might be the first for once. I've never done that, but it looks like you beat me. <laughs> By probably 10 seconds. So. <laughs> see if I can share screen and all that. It's already recording, so we might have to chop off bits. Okay, share, share, okay. Okay, I have the agenda. I have the presentation. Hey, Richie. Can't hear you, Richie, if you're trying to speak. Hi, Katie, Emily. Hello. Uh, we'll give folks about three, four minutes and then we'll get started. Today we don't have Amy, so it's just us. Oh, Matt, you picked this up already, right? So let's, let me go fix this. Oh, okay. I did it already. You're good. Yeah, yeah. You're good. We're good. Hey. Go. Hello, I'm dropping in. Letting you all up, like rock and roll. Stream Z, open APS, open your. Okay, clicked on the wrong one. I I'll stop messing with this. I mean, we can we can look at like the uh, uh, who's outstanding at the end of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I was just browsing until people. Oh, you were curious, of course. No, no, no. Like, the, hey, where are they? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Hi, Harry. Hi, hello, everybody. Welcome, George. It's been a while. Hey, Dems. So two of you are in Austin, right? Amy, you are there, and Richie, you too? Uh, and Aaron should be dialing in as well. Oh, okay. So yeah. thanks, thanks for doing the screen share. I was not sure how hotel Wi-Fi was going to hold up, but <laughs> we are ready to rock and roll. Yeah, no worries. I was planning for you not to be here, so. <laughs> I know, I know, but that's why I was like, okay, I'm going to drop in just to be able to make sure everything goes well. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's give 30 more seconds and we can get started.
No worries, Kitty. Okay, we don't have quorum, but we also don't need quorum for this one. So, yeah. okay, so uh, let me get started. Uh, hi, everyone. Today is June 21st, and this is the CNCF TOC meeting. Um, We'll be mostly looking at annual reviews today. Um, here is the antitrust policy notice. As usual, uh, meeting logistics uh, if you need it. Um, and we'll fill this up with the quorum, et cetera, later. And the agenda. So today we'll be doing annual reviews, like I said before, and let's start with the first one. Um, Justin, Justin did not make it today. Um, let me go over some notes uh, that Justin had left here. Um, there was also some notes that were there in uh, uh, private chat. So I'm going to pull them up too. Um, yes, okay. Um, so the goal of Cube OVM this year was to increase diversity in both contributors and adoption. Um, they've done some good work. Um, they have integrated with uh, Cubert, Cilium, Submariner, and I believe this is Metal LB uh, to provide a whole network solution, um, improve user experience, document more things, host more events. Um, so looks like they are trying to do all the right set of things. Um, and on a, a few other things that were there in the private notes were around, um, hey, um, what Slack are you using? And is it, uh, it, would, it would you all consider um, moving to a different Slack, um, like the Kubernetes one or the CNCF one, so that uh, you, know, you can pull in more people from our communities um, more cross-pollination, et cetera. Uh, the other one was, I don't think we found a good governance process. So I think we need to get the QBPN folks to talk to the SIG contributor strategy uh, to pick one of the options that, that are there or pick one option and then modify it to their needs. Um, and again, the usual culprit we have, uh, we have issues around security. Um, we need to do better there, basically look at um, the things that are being done in the community, whether it is Kubernetes or Containerd or um, some of the other things that uh, attack security can point them out to. Um, so that would be necessary as well. Um, in addition to the things that are mentioned here, which is uh, uh, more diversity in adoption and contributors. Um, and the other important feedback was, um, why do you need cube OVN when there are other things? Uh, what are these specific use cases? Um, I think the documentation needs to be clearer there. Um, so uh, some of these notes, we will end up uh, typing it out in the pull request as well. But in case you, are, you all are watching uh, cube o OVN, that's what we are expecting you to do. Um, so just to be clear, there is nobody from Cubo, Cubo OVN here now, is there? Once. Not seeing anybody, so yeah. carry okay. on. Yeah, so uh, any other observations from other TOC members? Uh, nope. Uh, one comment I want to add is, I think that project actually, um, mostly position itself as a bridge of the traditional um, software defined networking with the existing container-based networking uh, mm -hmm. ecosystem. I think we need to ask them to highlight this clearly in their documentation. They do have an added value here, I can see, but I, I think we need to ask them to add them this kind of message in their documentation. 
For example, I saw there are user cases in their um, in local ecosystem that using could be OVM to manage virtual machines with containers together. Uh, this is all, th these are all, I think, uh, valid user cases. Yeah. Okay, sounds good, Harry. Thank you. Um, I saw Justin pop up uh, there, but he's not here. So let's move on to the next one. Uh, Curie Fence. Uh, Emily, could you please walk us through Curie Fence? Yeah. Um, first off, I want to see if there are any Curie Fence maintainers or contributors on the call that would like to start talking about the project. If not, that's fine. Okay. Um, so Curie Fence is an API first DevOps oriented web defense HTTP filter adapter for Envoy and Nginx. It provides multiple security technologies such as web application firewalls, application layer, uh, distributed denial of service protection, bot management, and a lot of other things, along with real time traffic monitoring and transparency. Overall, the project has a pretty solid look of themselves. They know where their areas are for growth. Um, they only have a few projects and other and a few companies that are using them in a production ready capacity with more and more um, coming on board for uh, development and testing purposes. Um, the only recommendations that I can really find with the project, because overall it's it's pretty solid and um, their documentation is great, is more around driving that contributor growth. In particular, uh, looking through their documentation, the README is a little bit light on content, and it's more it's focused more on the use of the project um, rather than around the community management. So there there should be a good balance between both of those within the README, um, as well as making it more accessible to find information about community meetings. So they used to have them in 2021, looks like they dropped off. So establishing a consistent ongoing community meeting, if it's once a month, once every two months, public publishing that, making it more accessible to your users, leveraging the Slack channels a little bit more. So right now they've primarily been used as a support communication mechanism. So certainly driving more folks to attend those meetings, develop more contributions that way, um, and bringing a lot of that content back forward because it's it's deep in the, in the GitHub. I think it's a couple of clicks through on the wiki to be able to find that they actually had them. That's pretty much it. Oh, Dems is muted on purpose. So awesome. That was great. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> nope, you were muted on purpose. I saw you shouting at another corner. So clearly, clearly. All right. Uh, thanks, Emily. Um, any questions from anybody else? Going once, going twice. Okay. Go to the next one. Distribution. Uh, Ricardo. I'll give. I'll give this. Can you hear me? Please? Yeah. Cool. I'm, I'm in a noisy lob lobby without headphones. So I'll give this a go. Um, all right. Uh, so distribution. Um, so that's the core component for many registry. Uh, 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 operators. And this is things like Docker Hub, Container Registry for GitHub and GitLab, Harbor with different flavors. So the interest is very high, obviously, behind all these projects, but uh, they realized that maintainer engagement has been a problem. So there was one edit, but uh, having a look at the list of maintainers, which is quite extensive, it seems that most are inactive. So this is something to look at. Um, then aside from adoption, um, the the question about the move to incubation, the project uh, stated that uh, they are waiting for the V3 release uh, before applying for incubation. So here I had a couple of co comments, uh, which was uh, this this seems to be the main core of the work ongoing, but it is not reflected in the roadmap. Actually, the roadmap, uh, if you dig into the project page. Uh, is not very clear, so I think I think that that's something that could help a bit uh, is to to review the roadmap, which hasn't been updated for a while, and especially uh, describe the path to incubation. Uh, I think it's something that, given the importance of the project, it would be really nice to work on. 
Uh, and the same for, for the maintainers. One thing that I found a bit uh, hard to find, or I couldn't actually find, is the, how to engage more with the project, uh, like regular meetings for the project. There's some pointers for things like uh, uh, contributing issues and the uh, PRs, but there's not really a pointer on how to like go and listen to, to what the project is doing and where people can help, things like this. And then finally, for uh, how the sense of staff and the TOC could help, the project uh, mentions that uh, it's been helpful for project development, especially with integration with other components of the ecosystem. They give a couple of examples here with GitHub's CodeQL and uh, Fuzzy system. Uh, I think the question here is really how can we help uh, to get the, uh, the project in a state that it can apply for incubation? and also help uh, with uh, getting more maintainers. So th those would be questions for, for, for the project. I think you're muted, Tim. Sorry. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so the usual answer we have is, uh, you know, look at the CNCF service desk and uh, see if things are available there. Um, and if it's not there, then we can uh, figure out uh, how to get them added. There is a bunch of things that are available here. Um, and uh, yeah, so th that that's basically what we would tell them. Um, so uh, come ask us on the TOC channel if you can't figure out um, how to get help uh, with, with the things that you need to do, essentially. Uh, any other observations from the TOC members? Okay, uh, next one we have is a service mesh interface, SMI. Dave, are you here? Yeah, you're here. Yeah, I'm here. I'm just walking down the street with my kids from school. So let me know if it's too noisy or anything like that. I'll make you talk for me, Dems. Um, so I don't know if anybody from SMI is on the call. I wanted to give them a little bit of time to talk. And then my kind of big takeaways are on this slide, but I'll pause for a second in case someone is here and wants to speak on their own behalf. Um, I don't think anybody is here. So please go ahead. Okay, then I'll, I'll just say some stuff and then they can correct me on Slack or somewhere else. Um, yeah. Overall, the review looked good. Um, there are a lot of like interesting and like big and small names in in the review and like around their pages of companies and uh, projects that are using this that are using SMI. The hard thing with SMI is that it's a spec, and most of our like rules and guidelines are written around projects that are like I don't know, I don't know what to call it, like actually built executable as opposed to um, specs. So it looks pretty good, but they had a few questions that I kind of had the same questions of like, what does it mean to apply for incubation when you are a spec? So I think we at the TOC and obviously anybody from the kind of community around should have that conversation of what it means to move through stages of spec. I think this isn't the first spec we've done this with. Like I think uh, like Spiffy and Spire come to mind for me and there are probably others, but I think SMI is gonna need some help navigating incubation, like understanding when they're ready and then actually applying once they're ready as a spec rather than as a, I don't know what to call it, like a regular type project. And then my other big thing was just that in the help that they get from the CNCF section, they had written a few things that they had already gotten from the CNCF. And I wanted them to tell us things we haven't done for them, but they think we could. Uh, sounds good, Dave. I don't have anything else to add. Um, right. Should we wait uh, for them to reach the stage where they want to incubate, or do we need to do this earlier? That I can moment? reach out to them or just put it in the PR because they wrote in their annual review. I yeah. forget what it said. I don't have it in front of me now, but I think they wrote something along the lines of like, we think we're pretty much ready for incubation. Mm -hmm. but we're not quite sure what that means because we're a spec. So it would probably be good for us to kind of get the conversation moving, even if it's extremely slow moving. Okay. And I can at least start that in the PR. Yes, absolutely, Dave. Thanks for um, volunteering there. I was gonna ask next. <laughs> so uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, have a good walk, walk back from school. <laughs> uh, next one is uh, Katie, uh, K8GB. 
Uh, yes, so disclaimer, I, I'm on the fifth floor, but I have builders outside, so it can get very noisy and sometimes swearing. So if that happens, I apologize in advance. It's not, it's not me. <laughs> um, back to, I'm, I'm not sure if there's anyone from uh, KGB here, um, but this is a project that pretty much provides a GSLB, a glo global service load balancing. Um, multiple uh, solutions are available, however, they're vendor bound. There is nothing open source. Well, KGB is actually serving the problem. So I think it's still a very relevant project. Um, now, looking throughout their uh, contributors, uh, actual maintainers, uh, they have six maintainers, five of which are from the same organization. Um, so an advice is definitely kind of to improve that, to get a bit more diversity and a bit more uh, contributions from different organizations and uh, yeah, kind of different uh, industries as well. Um, another thing is uh, this is an APSA donated uh, project. So they have a production use case for this, uh, for, for KGB. Um, so it's great for that organization. They have other doctors, but there's no use cases. It's going to help to actually showcase a, a, a bit more of that. So definitely celebrate your successes and actually get those stories out. Um, looking into their um, latest achievements, it's looking quite good. They try to integrate with different um, hubs, such as Operator Hub and Artifactory Hub, which is great for their visibility and kind of increase their transparency. Uh, so I think they're doing very good there. However, I haven't found a roadmap. I looked through the project uh, GitHub organization. I couldn't find a roadmap. So please correct me uh, if, or like link it to, to the PR um, if, if there is one. It's going to be great to see one of those. Um, and in terms of the commits, uh, this project was developed on a spike basis. So it had a lot of commits at in one go. Um, they still have some commits and PRs available now. However, it's definitely declined since that general spike they had in, 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 um, at the beginning. So again, kind of enforces the same thing. They need more contributions and more people to look at. Um, in terms of where they're moving, um, they're looking into integrating with other clusters, uh, other providers, um, sorry. So they currently, they have integrations with AWS, um, but they're looking for other cloud providers, which I think is going to help again to increase the transparency. I still think it's a very good project, considering that it's an open source GSLB, but they just need that more uh, kind of visibility and maybe collaborating and finding the right peers to integrate with other providers uh, is going to help that. So I think that's everything I wanted to say um, around this one. Um, yeah, overall, um, I haven't seen anything towards incubation movement, but if they would like to move, uh, to the next stage, um, definitely recommend increase your like diversify your contributor base. Um, actually, celebrate your success. Do you have uh, people that adopted your tool? Uh, kind of write something about it and put it um, on the page as well. Um, and I think, yeah, definitely need some work on this. Thank you, Katie. Any other observations from TOC members? Okay, uh, let's go to the next one. Q Vela, uh, Harry. Yeah, so uh, this project in general is in good shape and we, we observe there are um, a lot of contributors and uh, end users engaged in the ecosystem. And uh, overall, this project positioned itself as a application delivery control plan. It naturally works with existing CI, CD, and GitHub, GitHub system as long as you need to deploy applications across multiple environments like staging, production, or multiple cloud. So basically, it's more like a application delivery system that focuses on multiple clusters and multiple environments. This is a unique value. And a highlight is this project indeed has serious design on minimizing user privilege. You know, when you try to manage multiple clusters, it has a five grand user impersonation and IPAC system to make sure that, uh, that those clusters cannot be abused. And the community growth is also solid. Um, uh, it, it, it basically have doubled its um, contributors to I think 150 or so um, after the sandbox and the contribution company is also growing very fast. Uh, well, I think uh, this project still needs some improvements in its documentation. For example, uh, although its blog says it can work with Argo CD, with Jenkins, with a lot of um, virus systems, but 
and they barely provide documentation for that. And those blocks are easy to become outdated. So I will stress that they add these, all of these integrations and formal documentation and samples as part of their um, website instead of just putting them inside the blog. So overall, I think this project is in good shape. They are asking for incubation, planning for that. I think they're on good, good track. James, you're, you're doing that mute thing again. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to leave it on. Uh, Harry, did you look at their security and governance um, stuff? How does it look? Given that yeah. growing a lot, right? Like, so putting some structures into place for governance would be important. Yeah, uh, as I just mentioned, they do have a serious design in the security part uh, because they this project actually will, will manage multiple clusters and deliver application on it. It's easy for them to ignore you know, the user privileges. I think the highlight is that they, do, they have a very fine-grained user impersonation system in case the, the, the privilege becomes abused. So I, I do think their security design is solid. And speaking of governance, they adopted the typical Kubernetes governance model, basically reviewer, pooler, maintainer. So very simple. So uh, I, I, also, I don't think there are any red flag for that part. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from other TOC members? Uh, one note, um, if you go and wander through the TOC kind of like overall space, um, you will notice that Kubevela is still in onboarding. This is because the trademark agreement is still running out there. However, legal counsel has advised me that could take years. So don't don't have that be a holdup for incubation for them. That was okay. all. Uh, trademark is not a blocker. For Correct. That okay. is exactly what I meant. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. OK, uh, next is Matt. Hi, Matt. Let's talk about Brigade. Yeah, let's talk about Brigade. So Brigade is um, basically event-based scripting built on top of Kubernetes. Um, and the project isn't in great shape. Um, they note that themselves, their adoption for their V2 version has their API servers only had, you know, uh, 2,700 pulls from Docker Hub. And um, outside of that, they really haven't seen adoption from people picking it up. In fact, uh, if you go and expand in the adoption side right now, there's only four maintainers and only one of them actively contributes to it. Um, two of them are doing reviews and two of them are no longer actively involved at all. And so they're, they're just, there aren't people contributing to it very much. They don't really have users and they're aware of this problem. In fact, the one maintainer who's been actively involved is you know, going to be even stepping back from that. And so they've been considering, in fact, the maintainers themselves got together and said, hey, given that it's not getting uptake, should this be archived? And once they'd already decided to make that suggestion, they had uh, somebody in the community who hasn't really contributed, right? Um, say, I'm, I might be interested in taking it over, um, but it's not somebody who's been actively involved or any of that. And so they're actually looking for input from the, the TOC and staff on how to move forward. Do they hand it off to somebody who they don't really know whether they'll carry it on or do they just recommend it be archived because it's not it's not getting uptake? And that that's kind of where they're at decision-wise with this. Uh, yeah, so uh, for me, it feels like Let's give it one more chance um, for the new per new person who is willing to help. And if it still doesn't work, then we can archive it. Um, you know, that that's the way I would go about it. Uh, what does everybody else think? I now, think that I, seems reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, and I will say that the person who's interested in taking it over needs to to rally people around it. And they haven't been involved enough that by any governance means that they were ready to just hand off the keys. They wanted our input before they handed it off, so to speak, because they don't know the people um, well enough to make that judgment call to hand off on their own. So it's that kind of disconnected relationship with somebody taking it over. Right. Okay. So, uh, but with the sense I got, Dims was 
this person who wants to fork an experiment, I'm not even sure they want to try and contribute it to CNCF. Oh, th this is one of the current four maintainers um, who will be um, kind of breaking away from it is just talking about uh, doing a personal fork and playing with it with experimenting. But yeah, this would not be something to go back upstream. They don't plan on being actively involved in. That's yeah. About uh, it. The person who, who wants to fork and uh, turn it into a personal project, they can do whatever they want. Exactly. You know, there's no restriction yeah. from yeah. our side. Um, our uh, you know, thought here is if somebody wants to step up, if uh, they could be brought on board and given okay. some guidance um, so for a period of time, and if that doesn't still work out, then we archive it. Um, so should we say, okay. um, say, give them time till until the next annual release. And at that time, uh, if things haven't moved in a good direction, then we archive it. I'm actually going to give you a shorter timeline. I would like to see progress and changes by KubeCon Detroit. Uh, works for me. Okay. Simply okay. because like if if oh just like if it's not going to work out like the let us make that call early rather than giving another annual review cycle. Yeah, and then life support and torture. And that's fine. No, no, no. It's fine to be able to say this was a great idea. It is now archived. That is great. Uh, it's okay to archive things. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Cool. I'll take the action to reach out to them do. and tie off on this. Thank you. See where it goes, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks, Matt. Um, next one is Cuber Healthy Richie. I dropped the ball on this. Okay. Um, I took care of you. No, I added the goals. Yeah, okay. Oops, what did I do here? Okay. Um, let's take a look at this one. Cure healthy review file. Primary maintainer, low volume of issues and code reviews. Uh, it is growing. Um, having trouble growing the adopters list. Uh, there's lots of pull requests. Um, the ramping up in stars and frequencies. Um, uh, this is like Google um, search unique visitors. Uh, like, I think it would make sense to increase the number of maintainers. Yes. Let's please do that. Uh, yes, uh, you uh, you should not be the bottleneck here. Um, give the keys to somebody else. Um, okay. Uh, milestones are out of date. It would be good to bring it back. How CNCF can help. Okay, paid Docker Hub account. Yes, we can do that. Um, and there is already something where uh, Docker Hub you know, you can talk to Docker Hub and say that this is a CNCF project and they'll uh, re they'll remove the rate limits on, on the project. Um, so yes, if you need more people, then you need to move to- Totally take care of that. That's fine. Um, that's a service desk ticket. Um, the second piece in here where like the, the improved logo, yes. Um, however, this is still a sandbox project and uh, we we still do not provide marketing for sandbox projects, so I'm I'm thinking that the the item of uh, funding funding like swag and, and all of that is uh, when you apply for incubation then then yes yes or passing for incubation. So. Okay, so um, yes, we agree that it is not ready for incubation yet. Yes, uh, perfect. Please do all the things uh, that you can do to uh, increase. The, the footprint of the number of maintainers and um, you know increase the momentum. I think there is you know a bunch of things happening. People want to use it, so um, go for it and ask us on hash toc if you need anything more. Um, Richie, any other thoughts while going through this? No. No. Okay. Sounds good. Any other toc members? 
Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, Schooner, Erin. Can you guys hear me through my mask? Yes, Erin. Not really. Okay, I'm at OSS. Um, so Schooner, um, I looked through it. It used to be called K8 Dash, and I think we also need to update that on our side so the dev metrics show up correctly. But they're going through a transformation of rebranding even the repos and everything else. Um, right now they have uh, seven maintainers that I counted, but they're all from Indeed. Not that that's you know, a limitation certainly in Sandbox, but as we move to graduation, we'd like to see a little more diversity in terms of maintainers across companies. I don't see a documented governance process uh, today uh, within there. They may have it, it might be called something else, but when I went through, uh, the project and get I couldn't find that. Uh, one of their requests to the TOC was recruiting more contributors. Um, and I don't really see a process by which they can get engaged, um, either through Slack or have meetups. I just didn't see kind of any sort of community opportunities there. So, you know, be happy to help advise in ways they could grow it through that. But um, that was one thing that I saw that they needed help on. They also needed help uh, for external demos. I don't know that we do that, Amy. I haven't had that request before. Good. We can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then uh, again, uh, they asked for marketing. Uh, again, we don't do that for Sandbox. So I will, you know, add that into my comments to the PR just to indicate that's mm -hmm. at Sandbox level, that's not really uh, appropriate. And then they also wanted help visibility of who might be using the project. Um, so I couldn't really find any user stats or pull requests or anything to indicate like it has an active cadence. Additionally, I couldn't find a roadmap or, you know, proposed features that are happening. So that's the status of Schooner. Okay, looks like they have a bunch of things to take care of. Uh, and I'm hoping that they can turn it around by the next annual review. Uh, any other observations from other TOC members? Okay, let's move to the next one, um, which is Trickster. Erin, um, this is yours again. Yep. So Trickster does have a, a well-established governance, uh, licensing, all those things that we would expect uh, would be, you know, well-documented. They only have three maintainers, but they have several new contributors and the project seems to be on a healthy cadence of growing very quickly. Um, they have a, a roadmap and they have, I think, 10 features planned for their next release. Um, right now, they're not looking to move to incubation. They're they're fine staying with Sandbox. So I think we just revisit them uh, later on in the year as we look to incubation. It looks like a, a project that I don't today have a lot of concerns around. Uh, they haven't asked for anything in particular from the CNCF and the TOC. Um, they're just looking to continue to grow the team, get more contributors, and um, apply for incubation sometime later. I think they're going GA with their project. Uh, I think it was next year in 2023 the roadmap goes into there so maybe at that point in the spring we can review again and see where things are okay sounds good to me thanks erin um you're welcome any other toc members any questions for erin okay. the support this is actually quite uh, richie we can hear you here so I think that was intentional. <laughs> I think that no, was no, intentional. I, I couldn't hear what he said. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to support that Trickster is actually quite healthy. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Good. I'm I'm glad that you said that because it seemed to be so very good. Awesome. Sounds good. So uh we are done with all the annual reviews for today. Um we do have um let's take stock of uh, who's working on what uh, from the TOC side for the uh, different movements of the projects between levels. Um, so I, I see three are in voting. Um, so Amy, those three, they're kind of done, right? Like They are. They are. They're um, uh, kind of working on being able to like make sure that like the press releases and all of that. So nothing, nothing really currently outstanding as far as the voting groups. Um, if we've still got Ricardo on the line, um, I know that there was a 
uh, availability for cloud custodian to move into public comment. Where are we on that? I, I'm still here. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Come on in. I think yeah. The summary for custodian. I think it's uh, it's uh, pretty much ready for public comment. So unless there are some last things, uh, I would probably open it tomorrow. Yes. Uh, give me today, and I will. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Yeah, thanks. And then the other bit for cert manager, I have the end user interviews uh, set. So there should be some progress as well in the next couple of days. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Thank you. Dave, Dave is next up, I think. Um, Istio and both Artifact Hub. If we still got Dave. Sorry, yeah. I... We still got Dave. Come on in. Yes, I am somewhat here. Um, yeah, I guess I kind of want to check with Matt. I feel like we haven't done much of anything here in a while, and I'm not sure if we're still even trying to get Artifact Hub to keep moving through the levels. We, yeah, what had happened was we talked about we needed to define um, who an uh, adopter was and what that means. And uh, I, I know on our side, we've been a little delinquent, I should say on the TOC side, we've been a little delinquent in documenting that. I think a few of us said, we'll go off and do it. And we haven't done it yet. And then on the Artifact Hub side, uh, they have started up picking up, trying to document in the traditional sense who the adopters are to see what that is, because there's the criteria for three adopters. And so we, we need to tackle that from both directions. So I think that's still sitting there waiting for us to take some action. Okay, that makes sense. I think it might be good if we, I don't know, didn't delay Artifact Hub on the TOCs, like inability to define this, um, and then just figure out with Artifact Hub, like who the who the adopters are, and then maybe within the TOC, just decide if that, I don't know, qualifies or not, or feed that into our making the definition. Okay, will do. Feel free to yell at me that I'm wrong, Dims or uh, no. Else. That's, that's fine. Um, let's ask them who they think their end users are and adopt uh, any amendments on our side uh, to include that. Um, that sounds like a good idea. So it, it'll unblock them at least, right, uh, from the current uh, morass they are in. Yep. Yeah, that was exactly why I was suggesting it. So that sounds good. Did we cover Istio and I missed it? Uh, at least I don't remember covering Istio, but I would happily cover Istio quickly now. And yes, then that is great. if I end up disappearing for a bit, then that is completely you won't need fine. Me back. We are nearly wrapped. Go ahead. Okay, cool. Uh, so Istio is moving along. Uh, I think the DD doc is pretty good, and Craig and I have gone back and forth a bit on some little things, but I think they did a pretty good job with it. The next step with Istio is just figuring out. Uh, end users to interview and they sent me a few and I'm kind of looking around at their general list of end users to decide if I'm going to stick with one of the ones, some of the ones or a few of the ones they suggested or pick other ones. And then I have to figure out like between my summer plans and uh, when they have time to figure out when to actually do that. But I think right now the biggest blocker is really just me finding more time to interview people and figuring out when to do it. Uh, thanks for doing this, Dave. Um, I wish you more bandwidth there <laughs> <laughs> take a vacation and do this Dave. <laughs> I, I wish you more bandwidth there that is my wish for you um i think the last one i'm not sure if we've still got Aaron on the line for key cloak yep i'm here um i reached out to the key cloak team there was some i think confusion whether or not i was the sponsor now that we've cleared that up i think we're going to be full steam ahead uh i need to just see where we are with the project and look back i know they're still interested in incubation they've been at this a while so you know i definitely want to put my focus on it and make sure they get the attention they deserve so. thanks Aaron. and i think like we start to finish the due diligence document is the is outstanding item just to add a little more color All right, we've got the last bits down here. Um, I know, I know where we know where Argo is, but Lee, if there's anything like the update in there, all right, we can move on. Um, and Spiffy Spire, I have the last end user interview this week. Once that's done, I'll get that typed up, and then I will um, 
open it up in, for internal discussion. Excellent. I am skipping GRPC because we do not have um, Justin on the line. So. Uh, sounds good. Okay. Project ratings for, for sponsors. Um, I did. Oh. Yeah, we've got some time. Go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We have 17 minutes. So we have Open EBS, Open Yard, Strimzy, and Open Cruise. Um, four of them that are available for some, some folks to pick up. Um, I might go ahead and pick up Open Yard, I think. Uh, le let me do a little bit of a research there. Uh, the edge use cases seems important. So I, I'll pick that up. Uh, anybody interested in any of the other things? Uh, let's uh, talk. Um, or if anybody wants to volunteer right now, uh, that's an option too. Um, I, I think I, I can pick up the open cruise. And also I can help Open Yard if you know they have some Chinese end users and I can actually help to interview those end users. So. Okay, perfect. So let me um, do my research and then we can pair up uh, for yeah. Open Yard. And, and yeah. I, I can take Open EBS. Uh, Richie, okay. I can I'll take Open EBS. Strimzy. Okay, Erin Strimzy, got it. Yeah, um, so I'm not gonna formalize right now. Um, it, you know, let, let me give you the day to think about it and tomorrow I will add uh, the names uh, in, in those uh, PR. Is that okay? Sounds great. Okay. Cool, glad to be able to see this all move forward. Awesome. So uh, we do have a few community folks here in case they wanted to talk about anything. Uh, Anita, Malini, uh, Ricardo, Ravina, Ahmed, welcome to our little neck of the woods. Uh, Thank you. Hey, I just was curious, is there any action in Kubernetes for intent-based scheduling, especially security intents? Um, so um, this crew won't know. Okay. <laughs> Malini. So uh, the better uh, word, you know place to ask this question is uh, SIG, SIG, um, sorry, uh, SIG auth or SIG security channels uh, okay. on Kubernetes Slack. Okay. Um, and worst case, we drop in on one of their meetings and uh, ask them that way. Okay, thank you, Dims. Okay, uh, unless Emily has some idea. Um, <laughs> Nope, I would recommend SIGAUTH and SIG Security as well for those discussions. Awesome. Sounds Thank good. you, Emily. Okay, uh, anybody else? Ricardo? I just uh, wanted to throw it out there, uh, just in case you need any, just a reminder, uh, in case you need any help with the tags, feel free to reach out, we're happy to help. Awesome. Yeah, I think- Thank you, Ricardo. Yeah, thanks, Ricardo. Okay, um, thanks a lot, everybody. And I give you back 14 minutes of your day. Bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you, Dan. Bye. Take care. Bye. Take care.